Hi, I'm Fernando Pereira from the Federal University of Minas Gerais in Brazil. In the last class, we talked about the chaotic iterations method to solve data flow equations. In this class, we will see how we can speed it up using some optimization techniques. To start with, let's recap what are chaotic iterations. Basically, we evaluate all the equations in the constraint system until the in and out sets that they produce stop changing. We initialize the in and out sets with the most imprecise information that we have. And then we keep iterating the equations that uh, we have. We repeat these iterations until we notice that the sets stop changing. At this point, we have found a solution to the data flow analysis. Something that's important to notice is that the chaotic iterations approach do not enforce any order between constraints. Also, if any in or out set changes, we have to evaluate all the equations again. That's unnecessary work. Let's try to find a good order to solve the equations. A constraint is made of variables and some variables depend on particular constraints. For instance, let's take a look into the prolog program that we had seen before. Can you pinpoint dependencies between constraints? That's a bit tough, in as much as you need to understand a bit of prolog, but don't worry, I will clarify this notion of dependencies. Let's focus on the mathematical notation that we had seen before to describe the equations. These constraints determine a graph. We have one vertex for each constraint, and edges denote dependencies between them. We have an edge from a constraint y to a constraint x. If the constraint x, I mean the equation that denotes it, uses a variable defined by constraint y. So for this set of equations, can you try to figure out the dependence graph? Here it is, the dependence graph of our system of 12 equations. Take a look at it. Try to make sure that you see how vertices and edges are created and how they correspond to the equations that we have. And how can we use this graph to speed up our chaotic iterations approach? We can improve chaotic iterations with a work list. In this new algorithm, I'm calling the work list W. W is just a data repository, I mean a data structure. It can be modified by two operations, extract and insert. Now, these functions are abstract. That means that they can be implemented in many different ways. And as we will see very soon, we can improve our algorithm by trying different implementations of extract and insert of these two functions. But anyways, what would be a good implementation of these functions? Can you try to think about how we, you would implement this data structure, W, I mean? Would you use a queue, or a binary tree, or a hash set? What would you do? Before I answer this question, let me simplify a bit the constraint system that we are using as a, um, an example. That's just to avoid globbering the figures with so many constraints. We have uh, currently 12 constraints, but we can reduce them by half if we remove either the in or the out sets. The things that if we have one of these, we will have the others. Uh, let's remove the out sets. But again, this is just for presentation purposes. It does not matter for our algorithm if we use in and out sets, or just in or just out sets. So that's our transformation. I will not give details. If you want, just stop the video and take a look to see how we have rewritten the equations. I'm using Prolog, but I bet that you can figure out how I'm rewriting the constraints to throw the out sets away. If you cannot make head or tails of the simplification, drop me an email and I will add more details to this video. <coughs> Anyways, now that we only have insets, let's call each inset x. So the first inset, I mean in of 1, 
will be x1. And that's the constraint system that we need to solve. Try to make sure that you can see a correspondence between the prologue program in the bottom of the figure and the constraints that we have written in this mathematical notation. And that's how we solve them using our work list. I will try to explain you how this table works, I mean, which kind of information it describes. <laughs> we start with the six constraints in the work list. All the insets are initialized with the symbol, the inverted T. It's called bottom. You saw it before in the beginning of this class. I mean, the name of the symbol is bottom. It means that there is no useful information in those sets. Later, we will see why the symbol is called bottom. Anyways, all the constraints are in the work list, and all the insets contain bottom, which means nothing. Then we solve the first constraint, which is x1. I mean, it creates the variable x1, defines the variable x1. But this causes us to insert two new constraints in the work list. They define x2 and x4. We had to add them because these constraints depend on x1. Then we solve x2, and that causes us to insert x3 and x6 in the work list. When we solve x2, we see that it should contain the program point 3. Take a look at the constraints to see why that's so. Then we keep working like this, solving constraints, and then adding more stuff in the work list, I mean the dependencies. We do it until the inset stop changing. As you can see, they stabilize at this point. Then it does not matter which equation we solve, nothing will change after this point. And if nothing changes, no new equation goes to the work list, and the evaluation of the constraints terminate. Note that we sometimes have several occurrences of the same constraints in the work list. That's okay. I mean, uh, that's not a problem. Can you figure out why that's not a problem? If you cannot, no worries, just drop me an email and I shall explain. And that concludes this class. Notice that we had seen the work list algorithm, but we will see further ways to improve it, I mean, to make it faster. So stay tuned.